wondering how you can increase your T3 naturally. I know this can be very confusing and overwhelming because in all reality, most of the time when you think about active T3, you think about thyroid medication and that there's no way to increase that T3 without taking thyroid medication. And so today I wanna to share with you a few of my tips that I would encourage you to try out to try to increase your T3 levels naturally without using medication. Now, there are instances where people do need medication regardless. I am one of those. I have optimized most of these things myself, but because I had such subpar care for over 15 years, um, it's been really difficult to get my T3 levels where I would like them. So I do have just a teeny tiny bit of thyroid medication um, especially T3 that I have to use. Now, granted, it's complete lower dose than where it used to be. And I know without a doubt, if I hadn't implemented these things that I'm gonna share with you, there's no way that I would have been able to lower my dose and go symptom-free. I haven't had any thyroid symptoms in eight years. So one of the first and foremost things is you need to optimize your key nutrients. So people with hypothyroidism also often are very deficient in things like zinc, selenium, B6, vitamin A. It's very common to see those very, very deficient. You can get that through food and supplementation. You can test for it. I actually test for it. Um, when I utilize hair tissue mineral analysis with my clients. So that's a way you can test to see where your levels are. Um, I always encourage it through food. Um, so before I share with you some of my other tips, if you could do me a really big favor, if you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then you will can hit that notification where you get a notification every single time that I release a new video. So my second tip for you is to improve your gut health. This goes without saying that there are so many things that can happen in the gut. But remember, 20% of thyroid hormone conversion from that inactive T4 to active T3 actually happens in the gut. And just kind of a side note, if some of you are like, what the heck even is T3? Why do we need so much of it? Remember, T3 is your active thyroid hormone. You only make like 20% of it. You don't make very much of it. You make a ton of T4 though. So you have to convert so much of T4 over T3. And when we don't have that conversion, that also can contribute to that low amount of T3. So um, my third tip for you is to um, assess and lower, if you need to, your reverse T3. So reverse T3 is a marker that you can have checked on a thyroid panel. And the reason why I like having this assessed is because when we have high reverse T3, it can directly inhibit or block the action of what your active T3 is actually doing. So things like stress, calorie restriction, over-exercising, gut infections, poor liver health. Those are all examples of things that can actually increase your reverse T3. And in turn, when we have that increase in reverse T3, it's gonna lessen the amount of active T3 that we have. Um, fourth tip for you is to check your liver function because again, I'm talking about thyroid hormone conversion, up to 60%, for some it's even a little bit more, but at least 60% of thyroid hormone conversion happens in the liver. That's a pretty large percent to happen in the liver. So if you don't know what your liver function is doing, sometimes that could be a contributor. I would definitely have your liver function um, test checked on a blood test. Um, AST and ALT are the two markers I would have assessed. When I work with my clients, I also do um, some other testing that can um, allude to or look at um, how the liver is um, contributing to breakdown of hormones and things like that. So liver function is gonna be very, very important. Um, another tip, my fifth tip, is managing your stress. Stress just, it causes so many issues in so many people, but the hormones that are released during the time of stress so that you can kind of manage the stress, um, those hormones, when they get released, um, the, the problem with that is when we have so much of the, that release of that hormone, which is called cortisol, and you've probably heard about cortisol. When we have a lot of cortisol, one of the things that cortisol can do is it can inhibit that conversion and it can actually increase reverse T3. So if your system's like overstimulated, it can start to actually drag down a lot of your hormone systems in your body. And one of the thyroid, one of the systems is the thyroid. The thyroid will definitely get hit. And that's because it can actually increase that reverse T3. Um, a sixth tip would be iodine. So iodine is very tricky. It's a very important nutrient. It actually is one of the creations for thyroid hormone. It's um, one of the things we need to make thyroid hormone. Three molecules make three T3, four molecules make T4. Iodine deficiency um, can reduce in the end by a cascade of events can actually reduce thyroid hormone production. 
we can get iodine deficiency from so many different things, um, soil depletion of our nutrients, avoidance of sea vegetables, um, using non-iodized sea salt, things like that um, can cause uh, a low amount of iodine. The problem with iodine, I would work with a practitioner because iodine can be very tricky if we don't have enough selenium on board. Sometimes it's hard to even use that, the iodine. Um, if you have something like Hashimoto's where you have thyroid antibodies present, that can also cause kind of a flare up almost for some people with Hashimoto. So I would definitely work with a practitioner. If you do start with it, you've got to start very, very low, very, very slow and pay attention very much so to your symptoms. But I do recommend to work with a practitioner, but it's something that I want you to think about that iodine could be a contributor here. Um, and that is something that I assess um, with all my clients as well. And then lastly, my last tip for you is diet and exercise. So. The more nutrient dense foods, the more whole foods that you eat, the less prepackaged inflammatory foods that you eat, that can also improve the levels of your T3 because it's just gonna nourish the body overall and the thyroid will be happy. And movement also can actually improve that conversion of T4 and T3 and the production of thyroid hormone because what does the thyroid do? What do your thyroid hormones do? It's your metabolism. So if we're moving, your body says, oh, we're moving, we actually need to have some metabolism here so it will actually increase that. Now, there's a line to draw with that you don't want to calorie restrict, you don't want to overexercise because that can be very taxing on the adrenals. So you've got to find that happy medium, but diet and exercise is actually very beneficial for increasing your T3 levels. So I hope these tips help you. These are my top tips. Um, there are definitely some more, I'm sure, that would be helpful for you, but that's why I individualize when I start working with my clients. I start individualizing things based off their test results for what could actually increase those T3, their T3, T3 levels. But these are the baseline, these are the ones that I would always start with. If you have any questions with me, definitely reach out. Let me know if something comes up. And if you um, also want a, my free guide, I do have a free guide that will go over with you what markers you need to have checked. Because I mentioned like reverse T3 is a marker. A lot of people get very confused. So I can drop a link below where you can go grab my free guide. It's called The Secret to Reading Your Thyroid Blood Test. And you'll know exactly what to have checked and the reference ranges. And that can kind of help guide you as well as why are my T3 levels low? Are they actually low? What other markers do I have going on? If I have thyroid antibodies present, that could be a contributor as well. So again, let me know if you have any questions. I'll drop that link below and I will see you on the next video. Bye.